Hello everybody and welcome to Team Fantastic Game 1 in the UK BBL. First match, I'm 450 TV down against this um, necromantic team here with Blodge Werewolf, a couple of Blodge Ghouls, a Strength Ghoul, a Guard, Block, Tackle, a, even a Dirty Player. The good thing is um, he's got quite a decent record. The good thing is he has got only 11 players. I do have Nashrak Blackhoof for 12 players. I do have a Wizard and an Apothecary. Um, so hopefully I won't get beaten up too badly, but obviously you never know against um, werewolves and stuff. If the claw is firing, it's going to be a rough matchup. Um, I'm going to be tryharding, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my camera and mute myself and just leave you with Fashbinder, who will do a sterling job of commentary, I have no doubt. So um, I will now hand you over to Fashbinder, the ultimate Blood Bowl streamer. Whoa, what a uh, brilliant injury. Curiously, though, Blackhoof, what's he providing to the team outside of a Strength 6 Minotaur or a Strength 7 Blitz? Are you going to make three dice with him? It's a really odd pick, as he doesn't have block, doesn't have tackle, isn't a ball carrier. All right, fair enough. Team consider Wizard or Bribes, 11-man team. Might be great to have pick up some Bribes. It is. Yeah, look, it's, it's not bad for that. If you do, make sure you're blitzing for three dice every time. You don't really need that ball carrier. Oh, for fuck's sake, I'm muted for the stream. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> um, so I, I thought it was a good, an it was a good rationale, guys. Just trust me. Yeah, the Hathark, was Hathark wasn't an option. Was had Hathark been an option, I'd have started with less stuff. Well, I would have started with three rerolls, um, and something. I would have, I'd have started with less stuff so that I could have got Hathark the Unstoppable. But Hathark the Unstoppable is not implemented. Thanks, Cyanide. So. Um, so that wasn't an option, so I went with Nashrak just because he was the best option from a bad bunch. And I mean, I could have gone for the chef, but it's not gonna, he's got bludge and everything, it's not gonna do much to him, is it? I thought. Um, and yeah, that, that's why I went for that. And now, and now I am definitely going to stay muted now for the rest of it and keep Fash muted as well. So, um, right, goodbye. Adios. Yeah, well, he, look, he was looking to make three die blocks, and that's a good idea. Uh, against an 11 man team, 3 die Mighty Bird Blocks on even AV8. Not only did you get them down, not only did you tie them up. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a six strength Minotaur that isn't a wild animal, but you can also then move if you need to to put him into a legitimate position. And like you said, there's not a whole lot of other better options. Uh, like no hack and slash on camera. Feels bad. Loading. Yeah, and look, there isn't a bunch of POM, so uh, good old Black who's not likely to uh, be gone in the first block. It also mitigates some of the guard. Uh, if he's really careful, I'm sure he will be. The uh, Cows to walk blockers will be in a good position to deal with the wolves, or the blodge wolf, I should say, the blodge wolf, blodge ghoul. But as an eight move ghoul, uh, sorry, seven move ghoul, eight move wolf, little blockers might be a bit slow, but a good uh, three dice from uh, Grashnak could deal with that. Fortunately, though, for Jim, but also unfortunately, unfortunate in that is uh, four move blockers making three puzzles to GFI. Uh, to chase down a wolf for a ghoul might be a bit tough. But with the short feet on a bull centaur, you know, worst case scenario, gets a two die, commits a team rural to it, maybe gets lucky and gets the power if it does come down to a potato. It's off. <laughs> I, I, I'm not off. The, these streams off. I can hear you, you can't hear me. Hello, Dutch Dam. Hello.
you keep talking, talking some stuff, saying some things. You know, because uh, you want the little microphone button. I, yeah. You can hear me, I can't hear you. Yeah. Except for if you unmute it and you're getting a coffee <laughs> or a tea. Oh, we'll never hear the uh, jovial response. Wow, very close setup. Looking to put big pressure on uh, in terms of defense. Not wanting the chalk blockers then, I guess, tied up in a uh, in a rotter. And by rotter, I mean zombie, which I might call a skeleton or a rotter at some point. If I refer to a rotter or a skeleton, uh, I'm really talking about a zombie. Wow, wolves on the line to get that extra claw hit. That's pretty brave, because they're gonna be exposed. Jim's set up to deny those follow-up blocks. I mean, a blitz on a corner would allow one of the wolves to to get through somewhat safely, but then surely Black Wolf's coming along to to three dice them for the single assist and bang whichever wolf is exposed. So, like, along with inventing things and making nice memes, uh, occasionally I like to think that uh, some people pick up some things when I play some games sometimes. So not not definitively, like all my inventions, but uh, in my game against Mole one time, he exposed his wolves a lot, and I pommed them, and they died. And ever since then, Mole's been really, really good with protecting his positionals, and I like to take credit for that. And so uh, whenever Mull wins something or gets to the top of the ladder, I'm going to take credit for his victory. Uh, I think Jim could offer the same lesson to uh, Elfie C here in that when this wolf bangs this uh, Chaos Dwarf blocker uh, and Black Wolf gets a single assist to three dice it into a death, he will have learned his lesson. Yeah, that's true. Heavy defense, also brutal. A lot of the time, even as Chaos with a Claw Hammer, I'll be hesitant. Uh, certainly not blitzing turn one. You don't want your ball carrier, like imagine adjacent to the the second row of uh, Chaos Warp blockers. Just having him on the ground there is just, just too shit. Uh, on a really forward, aggressive line like this, I probably just wouldn't even use it. And yeah, look, Jimmy has a single hobo bench thanks to the star player. And yeah, 11 man team for the Necro, so he's got to be really careful. I'd really like to see, uh, see these three dice pay off. And I'll be incredibly shocked if it is not the three of Mighty Blue Blitz. Four bullets pick up court, ball nice and safe. Not carrying only four strength. So perhaps supremely confident in his uh, ball protection, or similarly, uh, outside of the blockers, if they're tied up well, then maybe this uh, flesh golem one square forward tags two. A bit odd to be, uh, well, not really. I guess it's the midfield wolf comes across for the, uh, the two inch of the two, leaving itself on a, uh, a dwarf blocker. And then the guard assist, I guess, comes up. Oh, it gets away with it. Wow, re-rolls it! Holy shit, turn one grade re-roll on LOS blocks down to two. Water with a Kaz. Absolutely disgusting. Holy smokes, Batman. I think that uh, that would have been the result had it been a block with a zombie. With a uh, 10 on the armor and 11 on the injury. Oh, 
unfortunately, though, with the reroll, it has now exposed the wolf. Like a middle-aged man at a park wearing a trench coat. <laughs> Ready for all to see. Wow, Flash Gorm just arbitrarily retreating. The fuck? This is a turn one, middle of his own half cage. Where where only a bull centaur on a triple GFI in the snow would even get near the ball. Holy smokes, Batman. Dick's goal. Saving the, uh, turn the KO into a stun on an eight. This time, Claw being relevant to the block. But left the white for a good banging. And yeah, look, three die on the other wolf. Two die on the tackle white. Like, he got the absolute best result he would. Like, I would trade a block on my entire team if I could get a removal on a Chaos Dwarf blocker. Yeah, uh, turn one. Uh, no bribe, so the Dirty Player Hobo potentially taking him down to 10 on a 3 assist foul on AB9. But straight up, surely Jim will just take these gifted 2 dices. <laughs> Probably won't get, hopefully won't get punished on quad skulls or anything. But it's an armor break that could have just as easily been a removal on a block they did not need to give. I rarely see anyone that... There, there has been zero people in the champ ladder finals of any season, I think, at least in the top eight, that have, after the LOS blocks, uh, chosen to turn those LOS blocks into fallout blocks for their opponent. Although that's crazy. Blackhawk could think about tagging these two fleshies, and they would be right out of the picture. It'd be a, a fairly sizable commitment to... Well, not really. I mean, the ball carrier can do it. Uh, four strength ghoul with a, like a zombie assist, or rotto lineman assist. A zombie assist? I did say zombie. If he was able to screen out the rest of the team, those two fleshies would be pretty tied up. And that would keep the undead in their, uh, the necros in their half for quite some time. But then again, it is giving a free block. And we all know that Jim always says, every time I give someone a single block, regardless of the AV, uh, they break it and I die. And he's right, it's always a risk. And so yeah, running the Minotaur up, tagging the two fleshies, even just one fleshy, uh, to keep them in their half, to probably be... Maybe not stopping the touchdown, but certainly dragging it out. Uh, it does come with the risk itself. But then again, it could be a next level strategy. If there's a decent chunk of the team, like two fleshies, for example, running all the way to the backfield, so little Chaos Dwarf blockers have moved up to <coughs> pretend to interact with them. Uh, the, the fleshies aren't that slow. They, they're enough to be relevant from where they moved away. And, yeah, look, there are two of Jim's chalk blockers on the right. A uh, hobo and a chalk blocker midfield or further towards the end zone. Further on the right. Center on the right. It's five men on the right to one, one zombie. So Jim is pretty heavy on the right, so naturally moving left seems like a good idea, but on turn two, plenty of time for Jim to sweep around and catch him. But yeah, look, it was so odd, we had no idea what he was planning, but it would have likely have been not a wolf blitz to clear 
uh, black off off the two flesh golems. And I just think that'd be super dreamy to have both his four strength not around the ball. Maybe he's thinking about a uh, early touchdown. I'm, I'm not sure Jim will put the pressure on to force him to do it. This could be a turn four touchdown. And even if it's not, yeah. Even if it's not just having... Well, no, the, with this, this Tomb Guardian, uh, Flesh Golem position on the... on the Centaur indicates that he's looking to make the storm. Tying up the fastest short player. Almost said peace then. Holy shit. Caught myself. With a successful two die on the white. Uh, Centaur busts through the dirty player, and uh, Chalk Blocker then tags up the ghoul, maybe, or well, the ghoul and the wolf, maybe away from the wolf, tags up the two ghouls, Chalk Blocker on the uh, on the wolf, and by Blocker, I mean Chalk Blocker on the two ghouls, Centaur on the wolf. Centaur on the wolf makes it harder with the strength deficit, also makes the tackle uh, less relevant. Jim with a different plan. Uh, bangs down the lead wolf and just looks to get in front. A much better play for stalling. Busting through the cage and uh, really only giving him the three plus out to potato. Uh, was likely to force the stall. But then again, he wasn't he wasn't scoring this turn. There's a open hobo that cannot be marked. A uh, bolt recovery is pretty good. Well, Centaur, laughing at the uh, Flesh Golem. I think that would be enough to have him change his mind and maybe just rotate back to the center. It is only turn three. No need to potato down. Not even potato, but uh, it would be on a three-plus dodge. There would just be four men to protect the ball against a wizard, two Centaurs, and two Hobos. So I think uh, Necro Coach maybe should think about rotating back to the middle. And uh, Jim turned the five on the right, where there was one zombie, into now the inverse, one short blockers uh, on the right for three necros. And yeah, look, sweeping, a sweeping change. Everyone back on the ball. Well, yeah, no, look, it's a final action four plus that you don't care if it fails or not. You prefer it succeeds, but... But I think it was worth the gambit. I don't think it would have re-rolled it. But final action coin flips uh, are fine if it's not my player definitely dies or my opponent definitely scores. Really highlights the importance of break tackle on the centaurs on an otherwise slow team with the movement four blockers and the uh, movement six hobos. Not having them tied up is supremely important. Really diligent in banging these uh, chalk blockers with the wolves. A good decision. And as you see, like these these next three have not got the the Kaz as uh, 
it's just radically well not radically unlikely it's, it's not even unlikely but it is, it's not it's not probable it's not, it's not a claw plum pom blitz it is just like hitting a uh, a naked woody and then he went and risked the foul as well couldn't believe it like made a two die block that left his wolf wolf in a dangerous position And then wanted to risk that man advantage by throwing away a, uh, a zombie. Couldn't believe it. Thanks, Wolf. We'll have to be a little bit careful about where he puts the man that's probably going to mark the wolf, if any, uh, just to ensure that the guard can't go and assist it. Perhaps the two hobos and the non-blitzing uh, centaur move to rotate back towards the cage, and we've got a down blocker that is single man marking the dirty player, another blocker then that's single man marking the guard white, and the centaur to single man mark the wolf. And Black Wolf, unfortunately, went of a 3D here. Doesn't need it. Wouldn't mind star players being a bit better. Something cool like a break tackle. Oh, block, heaven forbid. Like, how are all these people, how are all these players star players? And they don't know, and then hardly any of them have rudimentary skills like block. Most of the cage can rotate down towards the zombie that's tagging the chalk blocker. Looks like it will. Jim will be a bit uh, hard pressed to free up the LOS uh, amongst those two fleshies. And it's the sort of situation that I thought earlier on was maybe worth avoiding if, if Black Wolf could successfully tie him up. He couldn't really, in that he was surely just getting two dice anyway. And a two dice on his star player that just has him on the ground is a bit shit. But those are the gambles always uh, worth considering. If you remember that Jim has the wizard in hand too, uh, hobos are for the maybe not the first time, but in this instance, really uh, in a good spot to deal or to look to recover. But in the instance that uh, here, they're just on their own. So if you did bolt the blodge ghoul, uh, it was just a single hobo holding the ball. That doesn't really get protected. I mean, short block can free the centaur from the guard white.
All teams are played the same, Johnny Five. All teams are played the same. You make your safe two die blocks. You move your no dice related moves first. You don't first action GFI. You don't first action. I don't know. Hail Mary pass. They're played the same. Oh, thanks for the uh, follow. Voila, Mac, Ral, a hog. What a top fella. And there'll be a spooky uh, short feet consideration. Chalk block is able to blitz the zombie. Still then tagged by the white. But the uh, semblance of pressure could be made. Maybe then the single short feet attempt to tag the, the white. Uh, the short feet ghoul, uh, short feet uh, centaur, sorry, will have to go first. Then the uh, other centaur will bang the the wolf. So on a push, the centaur's not, the, the non tied up centaur's not tied up. Oh man. You want to risk it, but you don't. Doesn't. What restraint. Uh, blocking the Tomb Guardian is pretty good. Unfortunately, it does turn over here. The other consideration could have been the block on the Zombie. Uh, would have had Black Hole free for next turn. But the safe plays were made first. Everything else was just a 1D. Oh, my bad, Johnny. Continue to take things I said out of context. Uh, did I say Tomb Guardian? I meant to say Flesh Golem. You should listen to what I mean to say and not what I say. Holy shit. What if I just sit here in silence and you, you guys all use telepathy to understand what I'm meant to be saying? Whoa. Triggered. Okay, Necro's done a decent job at stalling. What looks like it might have been a potato turn three, especially with that rowdy LOS reroll. Could be the four strength blitz on the uh, on the blocker. Nah, I, I'm sure he wants to use the wolf. But I don't think he'll be able to maneuver a block on all of them. Well, he rephrase. He definitely, definitely won't be able to maneuver a block on all of them. Uh, and so it'll be a matter of screening out the ball while also making what blocks he can. Maybe the. Uh, even in the ghoul blocks on the crate. Maybe wolf behind the uh, the centaur. Ghoul bangs the centaur on the success. Ghoul then assists the white. But then there's an unmarked hobo that gets out in the 3+. plus. Could be uh, ghoul assists the white. White bangs the... Uh... Oh, must be doing it. Ghoul on the centaur. Yeah, the dilemma with this play is that even on the success, when the blocker stands back up, uh, one hobo clears the other, and there's a hobo free to recover after a bolt if Jim wants to.
Or it could just be nah, no, it's not. It's he it's exactly doesn't get the success either. Maybe then the ghoul rotates behind rather than looking for that follow-up block. But that's not quite good enough. Orcs and humans are a great start, uh, Walla. Orcs and humans. Are probably orcs. Or even undead. Undead are great at low team value, really, uh, really to get you going. But yeah, make a team and join a league. If you're looking at one of the uh, standard leagues, the open ladder is a good spot for a new player. And then, oh boy, if you go to uh, youtube.com slash jimmyfantastic, We'll pick up a Kaz. It's dirty Dingo. That'll be a second miss next game. Chalk blocker. Next game's going to be rough for Jim. Yeah, hit that YouTube and there will be a bunch of race guides for all the races, I think. And that'll tell you roughly what the team composition should be, the strengths and weaknesses of that team. That sort of stuff. Oh yeah, all right. So uh, yeah, one D on the on the block. I got the second Kaz. That's disgusting. One D block should never break armor. Jim with his own one D, looking to free the centaur. Unable. And not just next game is going to be rough, but this game is going to be rough as well. Like the absolute best result for the Necro coach. And to be fair, I think he's used the claw uh, on every every turn, with the exception of the ghoul blitzing the centaur, but got the one die on the other wolf instead. Open is a great spot for new coaches. Nah, because they're on eight, the chaos. And they are a lot worse at low TV. Whereas Orcs are good at all TV. GG. Yeah, could be. Turn six, wizard in hand, could score in three. It is fucked though when you're down two chalk blockers. And I'm sure he really wanted to level those and have one on the field making two dies on on zombies. Maybe getting a lucky Kaz, maybe picking up an MVP, going into game two, Mighty Blow, picking up some MVPs and, and SUP in game two. Popping out a uh claw mighty bow block for game three. Like best case scenario. I'm sure there'll be a Chorf coach who hits that exactly. And uh, it's probably not going to be Jim. And then he will play Jim. And Jim will have to play a Chorf mirror. Missing uh, missing any skills on his blockers against a Mighty Blow Claw blocker. And that's why the new MVP rule should exist for, this sort of, for that sort of situation in a league match.
There's even a surf on this uh, number three chop block on the top left. With the dirty player for a push, guard for a push. One fleshy can red die for a push to free the uh, other fleshy. He could be super greedy and use the ghoul assist to get the blodge wolf a two die into a two die on the centaur. Would expose himself to the. I love ones. four minute turns. <laughs> oh, baby. GG. It wasn't GG, it was BG. One dice. Getting the power was bad enough that he yeah, needed the power the to stop. And even with the power, I could have blocked him and blitzed him and, and done something. But not only does he get the power, he gets the injury. Injury first block. I mean, it's just horrible, isn't it? It's an absolute shit show. Next game is going to be a shit show. The whole season is going to be a shit show. Ugh. What about when you run into another Chaos Dwarf team who got uh, a level each uh, each game on their chalk blockers and has a claw mighty blow chalk blocker on game three or four, and then you spin into them? I actually, I actually in um, on like Bums Bums Fallera, I got um, I got six cousin and MVP in the first two games, so it's it's definitely possible to have stats like that. But um, even for exactly. Me, but, then he got Mighty Blow Guards, which wasn't very good. Nah. Uh, and I mean, imagine, imagine if you'd have played there, like round four, two Chaos Dwarf teams, both played the same amount of games, and you just get banged on because someone got better MVPs than you. New re MVP rule hype. Let's do it. New MVP rule would be absolutely fantastic. To be fair. But no, it's brutal. Can't believe he rolled that LOS block either. That's outrageous. Yeah, the greed, greed re roll into cars. He's, he's obviously been watching Lupak. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Absolutely couldn't believe it. Mm. Fortunately, Surf uh, not getting a Kaz. That was nice. More than I, more than I expected. <sighs> Look, Wizard's still in hand. Not likely to recover it. Yeah, I can't do anything. There's, there's just nothing I can do, is there? Could it maybe just save it for the offensive draw? Yeah, that's what I've got to do. Got to use. Um, that was always my intention because obviously I'm 450 fucking TV down. Unless I get lucky as fuck. Um, which I don't know if you've been watching, but I, I didn't get lucky no, as fuck. <laughs> I haven't really, have you? <laughs> I think that's where you went wrong, really. Your decision not to be lucky. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a decision that I, I frequently go with, to be honest. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. No, no, a bit of a new play. But, um... I could have blitzed the wolf. Been scary. Now, oh, Mr. Ironclad knows that uh, has a quote here from Nethios, stating that the MVP role is a consideration. Oh, good, good. After Legendary Edition in six months. After. Oh, well. At least it's at least it's a consideration. It's easy to make consideration though. Yeah. <laughs> But, but you're telling me there's yeah, a chance. <laughs> there's a chance. I mean, if if he, you know, j just gets a clip here, like the last five minutes worth of discussion, it, it's like it seems pretty reasonable to me. You know, for league matches, even perpetual leagues, like my chaos team, let's say that 
I lost my ball handler and my wrestle tackle force strength beast, and I was currently eighth on the ladder rather than throwing games and deleting the team. Uh, with the new MVP rule, I could rebuild those specific players. Yeah. And it maybe wouldn't be a shit. Yeah. So helpful for the perpetual league too. Yeah. Oh, I guess I should have based that wolf. I just didn't want to give an easy claw blitz to him. But maybe I should have stood in the way at least. Nah, I don't know if I could have done. Hmm. Well, it'll be the single three plus if he gets the power here and follows. For the white to get the assist. Oh man, if he wind nines it, white. you're in for a shot. You could blitz with a white and then assist with a zombie as well, though, couldn't you? Being if we know, he might not get the knockdown. Imagine that. Imagine not making a knockdown for once. It would be the first time this game, I think. Yeah. Whoa. Don't do a try. Johnny Five, take 50 points from yourself. Well, both of you two need to um, like the new MVP rule and not hate it because you're wrong. It's not yep. debatable at all. It's amazing. It's 100% how the rule should have always been. It's clearly, if you know anything about game design or being a human being and having a normal working brain, it's amazing and it's how it should have always worked. So, there you go. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Why would you... Uh, let's like throw a rock in sweltering heat. It's randomness for the sake of randomness. It doesn't really add anything. There's no counterplay to it. You don't randomly benefit from it. You know, it's, it's not uh, interesting or whimsical. Like getting a four strength dancer, interesting or whimsical. Randoms to it's fine. Don't let everyone get a four strength or an AG5 dancer, sure. But at least let them develop the team leaning towards the way they want to develop their team. Team development is an important part of the game. With the skills you choose, how you level up your fellas, all very important. Having it just be absolutely random is as random as just having a throw a rock on every turn. No reason for it not to happen. Other than if you're dode and you like whimsical natures. Which is, of course, wrong. Try with a classic dord like argument there. Of <laughs> I'd rather not have someone get a couple. A couple means two concedes and be 1060 TV with a claw pom beast man and nobody else any TV. This is probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever read in my life. It's up there with Dode for how stupid it is so you can get timed out for just being that fucking dumb. <laughs> Censorship. We dumb. should explain to everyone why it's dumb. Like what, what kind of play is there in Okay game? well I'll tell you why it's around. dumb because an MVP is five star player points. So if you get two concessions He's got maximum 10 star player points after two games. And then, clever try here saying you'd have 51. And also, you'd be 1060, so you wouldn't have got the the, the two um, fan factor that you would have got for two concession wins. But, you know, this is what the people do who, who, who argue with good things. They come up with outrageously fucking dumb arguments to try and justify their fucking stupidity. And it disgusts me, and they should just fuck off. Like I made him fuck off just then. So good. Fuck oh. you. If you're going to fucking come in and talk shit, you can fuck off. And there you go, he did. So good. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. You're banged on. Yeah, banged on. Fucking banged on. God, shit like that pisses me off. Yeah, so Jim's point is pretty good. You're not going to get it after a couple of games. And let's say that every single MVP falls on it. It would be at least 10 games. 
and there are going to be two MVPs if everyone concedes. If they don't, and uh, it's just normal games, the person that you score on presumably will also have SPP. So you won't strictly have uh, those three skills on one player. If you do pick three players every time and ten times in a row, it falls on the one of three. Uh, I don't. I don't. What is it? One in three to the power of ten, whatever that is. It'll be a less than one percent chance. I'm sure. Rolling a one on a D3 ten times. But even if we were to indulge and say that, well, that that wouldn't happen. But let's say you do indulge it, and that someone somehow has a team that has no skills, and let's say they fire the other skilled players, and they really do want, and they lose every game on purpose, so they really do have a 1060 claw bomber. Let's say that that does happen this ridiculous 1% scenario and, you know, an experienced coach manipulates team values and, and their team and fires people, rehires people, intentionally loses games to keep fan factor down. Even if they don't lose games to keep team fan factor down and they're at 1100 with a claw pommer, how does a 1000 TV team with a bribe, because that play they're playing 1100 team, uh, deal with a single claw pommer on an otherwise unskilled chaos team? Nobody knows. And that's why I don't think being able to feed MVPs and having a superstar legend on a team of scrubs is ever going to be a problem because there's a tool in the game to deal with it, with the foul. And normally, a lot of fouls are shit. But if you're a fresh human team and you're playing against a a chaos team that only has a core bomber, it's pretty obvious what you do. But that, that's the absolute min-max argument for that specifically. Pontosaurus with block could happen naturally. People can fire skinks. Uh, if they really do want all their XP on sources, that's not hard to do. That can already happen. I don't think the MVP rule stops anything from happening or allows something to happen that wouldn't otherwise already happen. Standard fail pickup after all that. <laughs> okay, uh, good downfield push. Little uh, corridor for Chalks to run through. Also, one and nine on a goal. Yeah, but yeah, foul pickup is spooky. These walls come down to threaten, and the hobo's a bit, a bit open. New MVP rule wouldn't change balance at all, I don't think, uh, Notorious Noob. Because everything that can happen with this new MVP rule can already happen. It's it's not changing anything. It's uh, mitigating RNG. If you have a Lizard team and Bucky has a Lizard team, and you're both in the same league, and you both meet each other in round 10, uh, and Bucky gets all his MVPs on sources, he likely wins this match if you've got all your MVPs on skinks. However, in a perpetual league, uh, every time you get an MVP on a skink, you can just fire it if it doesn't get doubles. And you can play 50 games and you'll have all your SPs on sources. You might have a box skink somewhere. And through a lot more games and a lot more work, you've got the team that you want anyway. And so that's the thing. You'll get what you want anyway, even with out the new rule, if you really want it. Lessening bad RNG, absolutely. It's not, it's not even increasing fun. Just anything you can do in a dice-based game to limit RNG that doesn't really need to exist. The RNG that should exist is, when I make a two-dice block, what chance do I have to succeed? When I make a dodge, what are my chances to succeed? Those sorts of things, you use dice to determine the success or failure state. Like every RPG you ever made, from the likes of Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights, using dice to determine the success of your actions 
with modifiers. And that's all it is. You don't need to roll dice to determine if you're playing a, a Shade or an Orc or a Elf Minstrel or whatever. You know, let that be the player's choice. You know, what race they play or their, their character class. And team development's a lot like that. Let people develop their team how they want. Still decide, you know, with dice if they get doubles or a stat for sure. But don't make it as random as Throw a Rock. Fortunately for Jim, ball not threatened. Unfortunately for Jim, going to be tough to score. I mean, insane. Hmm. Wonder if these four could go one, two, three, four. This guy to here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI. Yeah, not quite. Yes! Easiest, uh, four plus to your life. And then <laughs> two one and nines. Oh, I wonder if a block can get in. No. So faster. Oh, it's a bludger. Optimistic. Gave it a shot, though. I thought about using the wizard, and if I had, I would have totally scored. <laughs> well, probably I rolled a four for the dodge. <laughs> but it wasn't worth it, committing to it to such a low percentage. No, that no, was... Absolutely. But if you do make that uh, that handoff with the reroll, you're just like, well, might as well. I had to try. I had to try. I had to try. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's go back in time. Maybe the, uh, is there someone that could one die for a push? No. Grashnak could've. Absolutely not a nerf to elves. Crazy thing to say, notorious noob. Especially for somebody who actually isn't terrible at the game. If you're new to the game, or you know you don't play like Dode, it's fair enough not understanding stuff. But come on, notorious noob, you you actually know how to play. There's no way to nerf to elves. It's amazing for elves that they can just give the MVP to like random elf who any any player leveling for an elf team is amazing because they're all good and they just all get better. Absolutely not yeah. enough to L. It's a crazy thing to come out with. Rather than have a dominate a game and hand off or throw to a unscored lineman to then score. So not only do you have to dominate, well, not don't have to, but dominate the game and be in a position that you can greed pass and have that unscored lineman in the in a scoring position that's protected to get him the ball so he can score. Uh, just giving the MVP is going to be so much easier and just scoring your catches or your dances or your ball carrying position.
And let's say it is a nerf to elves. Good. <laughs> because they consistently dominate all formats. So, you know. No problem with that if it does nerf them indirectly. I, I mean, agree. The, obviously, the element, the, the, the thing is, is source, isn't it? That's the most reasonable th argument anyone can come up with, is that it makes leveling Saurus easier. And so it buffs already the best low TV. Well, one of the best low TV teams in the game. But, oh, God. And it's the one the other side of of Nashrak. Imagine if Nashrak was outside, just get a free get a free surf, but instead he's at the other side. <laughs> Never lucky. Unbelievable. Ah, uh, some fucking man alone next door. Why is he mowing the lawn at ten, at 10 p.m.? <laughs> get yourself a pint. It's actually Let not 10 p.m. It's 8 p.m. 8 a.m. on the dot. Holy shit. What country do you live in? <laughs> I'm on the other side of the world. Holy upside shit. down. That's crazy. Wait a minute there. I'm sitting right side up, so you must be sitting upside down. <laughs> <laughs> How loud is it? No, it's not that loud, to be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna put him next to the ball and not blitz. <laughs> I'm so good at blood ball. Not even blitzing. Fucking throwing rock on the guy back to get the ball. Unbelievable. With any luck, he'd potato someone down and grash knackle bang him down for a cuz. I feel it. Ah, oh, Nomadic Nomadic Jam donated five pounds, said get yourself a pint, lad, keep calm and carry on. Thank you very, very, very much. I'm 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 it's a shame that I missed that. Um with the dry harding and also thank you earlier to Draz 0000 he did donate a pound and said fucking chat um, after I blame chat for a misplay well may arguably misplay agreed play but um, thank you for that earlier I didn't, I didn't thank him if he's there thank you but um, thank you very very much nomadic jam yeah I'm I'm kind of see this is the thing I just care about blood ball and that's what riles me up more than anything you know I, I don't really care if I get if I get dice that much and stuff what pisses me off is the people fucking up Blood Bowl, you know, and like not wanting progress, like defending things because it's the way they are and stuff. And then the worst one, of course, is it's not chess. And then overreacting by saying, oh, you can make a claw pommer in two games as the only level player. And, or, you know, just all this other sh bullshit. And it's like, for fuck's sake, just have a brain and make a reasonable argument. And then people say, I'd rather it was just a re-roll, or I'd rather it was this. Or, well, fuck off. The, you know, the professional games designers who work for Games Workshop, not just some random dude off the internet, has come up with a rule. <laughs> and so just fucking think about using that instead of, you know, when it's just clearly far, far better than the existing one. Yeah, try it, though, Notorious Noobs. And, you, well, you were just giving your opinion, not an example. <laughs> Your opinion is not an example, and of course it changes things. You can't give examples of how it changes things because you haven't played. You haven't played it because um, no one's no one's played it in this in this environment. The only people who've played it well are small local leagues, possibly, but of course it's it's in with the Blood Bowl 2016 rules, which are the seasons and uh, you know expensive mistakes and no piling on and all this kind of stuff. So. No, no, Bizzle. GW is not exactly a stellar example of great game design. However, they are paid thousands of pounds, unlike the people chatting shit in Twitch chats. <laughs> well, the illustrious Sarnide forums. <laughs> yeah, exactly.
We could for Fantastic Legendary Edition with the team editor. We could use the well, not maybe not for Fantastic, but we could make a league with the new MVP rule. Maybe a lot more admin work, but it's doable. I, I don't like anything that that requires work. <laughs> oh god! That's right. I pay my people well. A hobgoblin blitz. This is this seems bad. <laughs> They've not been at the GF. I'd love to build the GF to hit Nash three dice in with Nashrak, but not on a three plus. I'd oh. rather get my whole team banged down and fail up another pickup. Yeah, but those will be the only two choices still, right? It's keep the current rule. The Senate has the directive that they can use it if they want, but they don't have to. And so the choice will only ever be between, unless it's, you know, plasmoid pipe stuff and, and says something, who knows? Uh, but it will only ever be the current rule or one of the new rules. That will be the only thing that they will do, I think. I made the fatal mistake, Will King, of looking at chat. Listening to Fash oh. and looking at chat while I was meant to be tryharding. If I had just turned off Fash completely, um, turned off the sound completely, then I wouldn't have known there was talk about, about the MVP rule. And then I wouldn't have wanted to look at chat, and then it would have been alright. Pro tips. Should, 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 Roll fast. Didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Thank you very much, soccer soccer cars. I don't know why I said soccer cars. The the alert box isn't working, is it? I've just realised. That's why I didn't hear the um, hear the thing that came up. But um, I, I did hear. Should 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 should. I remember the should. Thank you very much, squirrel dude. Very nice of you. VIP squirrel dude. In fact, four pound and twopence. Is that probably five dollars? Good God! Is that five dollars? Fucking hell! Pound's worthless now, isn't it? <laughs> Pound getting banged on. Five dollars. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, got him. Yay! <laughs> oh, just dicking around trying to pick up the ball here. <laughs> right, can I blitz him now? Yes, I can. Alright, let's fucking get him. Got him! No armor break, standard. Yeah. Seems pretty standard. Aha! Uh -huh. Picked got up the ball! Things are looking up! Yeah, got the ball in hand. Victory is surely only moments away. What could <laughs> go wrong? Three guys off the pitch, but still nine on on the pitch, and he finally I finally removed a player on turn turn, turn eleven, well, and it was by he him. Didn't really remove a player, yeah. <laughs> removed his own player. 
is by him fouling a thick goal player and making a knockout. <laughs> In a way, it's safe as can, but you've got to remember the the all the bash that doesn't already have claw was getting claw pommed, <laughs> and now it's only getting claw mighty blowed. But it really it just it's weird because the new the new panning on rule is not in isolation, of course, because they've got this new seasons rule which which ensures low TV play, continuous low TV play, basically. So um, so it's interesting. I mean, Claw Mighty Blow piling on was only ever really a concern in, like, you know, massive multiplayer shit <laughs> online, like, in matchmaking. It was only really an issue there anyway, wasn't it? So... Well, that's the thing, though. So, like, every team that has Claw Pom, for the most part, is AV8. And Mighty Blow piling on on AV8... Uh, Mighty Blow on AV8 is still pretty good. Well, the thing is, Will King, it's it's not a stupid change, which means no one will take it. It's actually just not in the rules. It's in optional extras, along with, like, random other things. So it, like it is essentially rest? removed. It is, you know, it is removed from the rules as um, picking, allocating the MVP after a match. That's that's how just not in the rules it is. What about the Goblin Ref? I really like the Goblin Ref, Jim. Yeah, the goblin ref. The goblin ref is probably how every ref should be, and and that that's as how optional piling on is, as in incredible. really, it's that optional. Yeah, that's how. Oh, man. Yeah, I reckon that should be core to the game. But every time someone fouls and doesn't get caught, they then roll a d6 for every time they haven't been caught, and they beat that number uh, to yeah. not get sent off. I think that'd be amazing. Yeah. Like for example, this match, this little dirty player could have continued to foul for the entire game and not got caught and got a KO or better every time. Like, totally possible. Yeah. And he just wins the game, like, more so than what Claw Pom would. Yeah. yeah. And he's not cost. it doesn't cost him a Blitz, it doesn't <laughs> cost him a 160, or well, it doesn't cost him the 160 TV player that would do it, it doesn't have a player on the ground. Yeah. yeah the, the Jody player fouls is infinitely better and so much more rewarding. And if it doesn't get caught, you're just banging on people that you otherwise never, ever would you stand a chance against. <laughs> yep. It's a nice trap. Yeah. He's a madman, isn't he, this one? Never trapped. Um, yeah, there's no there's no bank rule in the new, in the new rules. Um but there is like expensive mistakes, which means you you get your you randomly get your treasury wiped out, <laughs> which if anything just makes you um <laughs> makes you buy frivolous wizards even more. <laughs> it's very hard for dwarfs, chaos dwarfs to beat Kemri, Jake Snake is very very hard, crazy hard in fact. I banged down his um his wolves lords, haven't I? Just haven't done anything ever to them. I don't think I can force the score through even with a wizard usage now. Yeah, it'd be real tough. It's just so fast. Need to power this guy. Oh wow, that was nice of him. <laughs> I mean, I can see why he did it, but still, it gives me a bit of breathing room that I didn't have to have. A cyber out. Well.
Yeah, I, th I think a small league playing with the new rules is fine, CULs, because, you know, like, I don't know, I can't remember. I worked out, I think, one of my teams that did all right, um, the Necros in Twitch Blood Bowl League. Um, they were going to have to, like, sack a... Sack a... Oh, can't speak English. Sack a zombie at the end of the season, something like that. So basically, although they, then they could start at that, they would have to start the next season. They would have to cut a lot, wouldn't they? Because they'd be starting with like about 1,400. But every season they would have to start about 1,400. So while they would... Or 1,300 maybe. So while they would maybe get to like 1,500 during the season, they'd have to cut every down to 1,300 every season. And I think that's pretty good for, for like actual real human being leagues. Because, um, you know, p new people might turn up and... Being 300 down sucks, doesn't it? Being 450 down like this absolutely fucking sucks ass. Especially if you're playing a real person. Where you've both got to like, make a lot of time, travel time, turn up, set up the board, all this kind of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Me and my friends, we never played. I, I made a board, a really good board. I've, I've posted links to it and stuff, pictures of it. It looks, it looks completely amazing, even if I do say so myself. I made this amazing board and none of us get to use it because we just played on Fumble when we when we had a league because fuck actually meeting people in real life and, you know travelling distances to play games when you can just sit at home and play on your computer. <laughs> there was a really nice meme on the uh Blood Bowl Reddit. It goes by team, paint team, set up league, message friend, but right time and place to play. Look forward to it all week. Go to work, get psyched, finish work. Drive an hour to meet him. Meet mate. Buy pins. Set up board. Set up models. Roll fans. Roll feather. <laughs> weather. Roll kickoff events. Shake hands. Move players around. Throw a couple of blocks. Leave myself wide open. No problem. Pick up the ball this time. Snake eye the pickup. Gracefully concede. Well, the game wasn't going my way anyway. <laughs> Back up. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty amazing. That was a pretty amazing post. Holy Table shit. Top. Holy shit. That was a really good comment. Fucking hell. Because it's true, though, isn't it? Like, tabletop, there's a lot more to playing a tabletop game than there is, you know, online, on your PC. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hell of a lot more. Fashtastic League will not have... Well, it might have racial limitations. I don't know how it's going to work. Scroll down. Whoa. I think it might just be invited. So, like, if it's invite <laughs> only and we've only got, like, eight people in the league or something, then, um... Then, you know, I just don't know. Right, I think we just let people do what they want to play. Yeah. Can I block him, bolt him, blitz him, and then make a run? Doesn't seem like the best fucking thing, does it? But then what the fuck else am I going to do? Just concede, so... Right. <laughs> bolt him. And... Oh no, I can't, can't get him in until he's moved. I guess I can just tag him like that, can't I? He can be tagged on him. I hope you power the goal. Yeah. Right, he's got a block first. Loan a block, first of all. <laughs> got him. Oh yeah. Oh baby, my mom. Oh baby. Yeah. <laughs> Get some. <laughs> um. I mean, unfortunately, it's incredibly easy from just to dodge away. We'll block him away and then get two dice. Unbelievably easy two dice in the ball right now. Um, how can I make that? I can tag him to make tag it a the dodge. the way. And this guy can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or something. Yeah. So I think this is tag him with him and go for the old, go for the old bull dodge. All right. <laughs> Easiest four plus of your life. Yeah. Oh God! Got to use oh, a team reroll to make this GFI though. 
Yeah, boy. Hey, look, so there's at least, uh... At least two one and nons now. Yeah. He might... He might fuck up. Yeah, I'll go block first, creature god 99. Or maybe even dodge. Maybe wait till one gets doubles and then go dodge. For sure, hands. Yeah, break tackle first on both hobos, on both uh, centaurs. Break tackle or block. I, I like break tackle first, but block's good as well, isn't it? Sometimes. Hmm. Just the amount of people that throw a rotter on it, and your team's just so slow otherwise. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Being able to break tackle is pretty nice, to be honest. Maybe break tackle on the first one, and then maybe block on the second one. Like if he gets to 10 or something, maybe go block first on him. But yeah, d break, break tackle is really nice. Because then they actually get to be moving six, don't they? Hmm. Worked out which order to do it in. <laughs> His name is Long Dong 88. <laughs> <laughs> Long Dong 88. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good name. Are you moving? <laughs> Long dong idea. That's a good name. Yeah. It's still not quite as good as um not not quite as good as Drogba's knob. <laughs> 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 I think that's the best game attack of all time. Thank you for the follow Huanchi TV. <gasps> I should have probably one diced that fleshy, shouldn't I? But I just didn't care. Yeah. Oh man, he got him on the ropes. He knows what he's doing is dodgy. And uh, making the non-relevant blocks. No he's confidence in this player. He's made the first one, so now it's a 1 in 9. And then 75% knockdown, so... Yeah, looking like a loss now. But did quite well, I think, 450 TV down. With no good star player available. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Uh. Uh. I thought now at least the ball might go on the crowd and give me more of a chance. Mm. It, did not, it did not give me more of a chance by going in not. the crowd. <laughs> it almost gave you less of a chance. Yeah. Right, I need to go for the art of the Lupak soft concede now. Beg him not to punch anybody. Please don't hit any of my players. Please, I, I, they're valuable. They've got armor nine. I don't want them to be hurt. Please. What if he, what if instead you made a three boss and a four plus and a two die power after the GFI? I don't know. And you just picked up the ball. I'm gonna re -roll it. As bad as this is, it's the only chance I've got, isn't it? Can't roll any dice. GG. It was GG first half, really. I, I needed, I needed to be the one getting lucky and not the guy being down players. Really, if if this mighty blow guy had kicked off and started wrecking, like if <laughs> he gave me a three, six dice against a against a block werewolf on turn one, didn't he? With mighty blow, if I cast him and no regen. It's brutal, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe if I'd bolted the... Um... If you had two more blockers on the field, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Their first half foul got sent off. Yeah, if that foul had been sent off and I'd cast his... Like, he fouled a stunned, thick-skull player yeah. on turn one. If that had just been sent off and into Werewolf getting cast by 
and that black hoof. That's the look that I needed to win this game, I think, 450 TV down. You know, with, with all the block that he's got and all the dodge and the strength and the guard, it's like... The bludge most important, I think. With yeah, the tackle. bludge, yeah. I've, I haven't got... I just haven't got mobile tackle, have I? So, yeah, the the, the two bludges, the three bludges, just exceptionally hard to deal with. We, if only we had, like, a foul calculator that we could use to find out if, uh, what, four assists on an AV9 fixed goal with uh, with the dirty player is worth it. I'm Even sure just Squirrel on... Dude could hit us up with it, with the info. Oh, does Squirrel Dude have a calculator, does he? He does, he Has he mentioned it in the last five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's didn't know squirrel. from the start this game was likely to be a loss. Yeah, of course. I mean, I said in Discord I'm going to get banged on 450 TV down. It was obvious it was going to be really hard. But if I had been the one who got lucky, I would have had a chance. Like, I mean, just losing the toss was bad enough, wasn't it? Because the first block was a Kaz. If my first block had been a Kaz into um into Norwegian. Oh. Yeah, so I, if I had won the toss and I had got, you know, a three dice mighty blow block and a few other blocks and he started his turn with players down and everything, then things might have gone alright, but it was really fucking hard. And then also he was carrying he was carrying on his other ghoul cleverly, so that if I bolted him then he he wouldn't be he wouldn't be getting his strength four bolted. So I mean he he did he did some good players. It's not like he was terrible or anything. I didn't um, like his opening player. I thought his turn one was abysmal. Yeah, I didn't like that either. Um, well, the Kaz would have been a Kaz with that form. It would say 10 into an 11. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, the foul, the foul, I thought, was was very questionable. And getting his um, walls banged on. Yeah, like setting up for the for the frenzy to, to frenzy trap himself, not not in the terms of the block, but in terms of getting banged next turn with your forward setup. Yeah. You just say to yourself, "Well, he's set up so that if I make this wolf block, I get banged. I'm not going to make this wolf block then." Yeah, like, that's what. I, simple as that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why I set up so that he wouldn't make that block. And Did then... it anyway. Didn't get punished. Got rewarded. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought he got rewarded when it was a both down, so he wasn't going to get punished for yeah. putting on the line. But yeah. Apparently not. And then he loo packed it into um into a cast, didn't he? <laughs> would have been a hero long beard player. That would have been funny, wouldn't it? Not that bad odds really, one in nine, wasn't it? To get him down. Like, after I'd made the 4 plus dodge and the 3 plus <laughs> Yeah, after that. <laughs> after that. After that wasn't too bad. <laughs> oh, how'd you do against Mole, Lancelotti? Did, I didn't I think I saw the end of that match. Maybe I did, I can't remember. VIP jam toast. It's cracking, buddy. Ah, fair enough. Hey, uh, squirrel, you should link it. Just in case anyone wants to do foul calculations. 
because you haven't really mentioned it very often no one knows the link i'll even make it a bot command that's not a bad idea making it a bot command actually i invented making it a bot command don't you dare take it away from me <laughs> <laughs> i'm not taking it away from you i'm just stealing it raped and taken from me <laughs> What I reckon about a handoff to is uh, Block Wolf. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, he's already I won, hasn't he? So, so he hasn't got a reroll though. What's he got? Twenty-three. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still go for it because a one-nil win is just the same as a fucking two-nil win, isn't it? Important to get you. Yeah, the short hands with the goal though, pretty important though too. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, true. True. Uh, just paste it, I assume. Squirrel? I can base the ball and only lose. <laughs> only lose one nil. <laughs> that doesn't seem worth it, does it? Could go for the no. 6 plus dodge into a minus 2D to pop it out, and then I'm just going to try and hit people. I mean, you're about due for a Kaz. To receive one, you mean? <laughs> no, no, I mean, to, to get one. You've, wow. uh, it, it's like you've made zero blocks. Yeah. I'm feeling it. Oh, I like him getting his guy out of the way there. Might as well get this hobgoblin killed, just for the chance of randomly getting a something. I don't even know why I did this. Oh, God, pick the skull there. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what a shit show. What do you reckon about giving block to every star player? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. Yep. I wouldn't mind making big guys great again. <laughs> so like, make Nashrak Blackhoof a Minotaur. And you know, he doesn't get skills. Um, he doesn't get star player points. Big guys don't get star player points, but a Minotaur is Nashrak Blackhoof. You know? Like the good old days. Back when, back when big guys were actually good. So making stars better, I'd be okay with. Because it, it's just shit being down TV, isn't there? I think that's the thing. Yeah. It's just so shit being down 450 TV. Holy shit. It's so, it's so shit being down 450 TV. Against a competent opponent, it's not even like um, it's not even good being 450 TV down against a no because they're gonna <laughs> like the, you know if you're a bash team and they're a bash team they're gonna have loads more guards and mighty blow than you and you can't really yep. play around that even, even against a poor opponent. But if they're competent, then forget about it. If you're 450 TV down, unless you unless your wizard's absolutely devastating. And you, I mean, you know, I could have got lucky that game. I really could have done, but um, didn't. Well, you only made nine more blocks than me, which is surprising considering how much I gave up. <laughs> and just yeah, and actually did, did nothing the whole time. Yeah, and um, both center MVPs fine, I guess. Uh, Five SVP for the match. Couldn't go to a better fella. Yeah, no, I got, I got one point. I got the hobgoblin, hobgoblin completion, didn't I, when I went for that? Oh, sure. <laughs> so, um... Right, match is confirmed. He's got levels. I'm down to 850 with two. 
<laughs> to um, CDB's missing the match. Next match is um, game two against oh against us, another starting Chaos Dwarf team. However, down two blockers. How I'm I'm down two blockers, so I just hope his team gets absolutely fucking ruined. <laughs> in his first match, what's his first match? Belgrade Whites. That's a starting team. No, it's not a starting team. Oh god, it's he's playing sixteen twenty Necro, Balsha. Um, much this. Oh no, his, his his team's even worse than the one that I had to play. He's got a Pommer, a Mighty Blow, Blodge. So hopefully he'll completely wreck the Chaos Dwarves. He's got fourteen players as well. Holy shit. So it's going to be really hard pressed to win that game. Is is uh, Mercy Flush? So hopefully Mercy Flush's team just got, just gets absolutely fucking slaughtered, even worse than mine was. I might be able to win the second game, but um, it's just it's just this is what I hate about these leagues. You know, this sums it up right here. Seventeen hundred chaos after one season. This is as well. You know, after one oh, fucking season. 1700 chaos, 1520 dwarves, 1620 necros, 1450 necros, and you know, you join in with a thousand TV team, and it's just a load of shit, and I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I, hate, I really hate these kinds of leagues. I can't actually uh, put the camera back on because I'm naked right now. So, um, oh, baby. you'll just have to imagine me sticking my thumbs up at the camera. Um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.